We're at the Bears Gallery. It's an opening showing recent work. I love just kind of what your art says. And it's Thank beautiful. you. Really, really interesting. Thank you. Almost how they're like a little rudimentary, but also complex at the same time. I hope so. It's like, and maybe not like the style of it. You don't like the painting. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. She I doesn't like the no, painting. I didn't say that. That's <laughs> not what I said. There are the people who are genuinely interested in art. Then there are people who come for wine and cheese. Usually they don't look at the art. And um, artists, they're interesting because their reactions, they register on their faces. Love your work. Oh, do you? Thank you. Do I feel sad if a painting of mine is sold and it's like one of my children? No, I'm ecstatic. I think children should go out in the world and be on their own. I'm happy when they're, they're gone. I hope never to see them again. This is a presidential job. Oh. <laughs> I get along very well with artists in other fields, dancers, theater people. How um, long have you been painting in your whole life? Or? I believe in past lives. Do you? Yeah, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. I know who I was in other lives. Uh, hi, Cindy. Hi, John. It's nice that we have some time together today. Cindy Dale is a psychic I've known for many years. She's a friend, but also I've been working with her for 25 years. How in so many ways your paintings are like portals. They're windows into, from different realities or into different realities, other dimensions. She has guided me through past life regression. I was a failed artist. I'm much more interested in the immediacy of, of people. What every artist wants is an audience. You, as big an audience as possible. Um, you wanted to take this to the gallery. There is such a myriad of artistic expressions, of things that John does, whether it's writing or, or painting or plays. And it is very unique. And in the landscape of his career, you would think he would be more towards the end of it in terms of, of artistically, but it's, I feel like it's the beginning. I think a lot of times with your work, it benefits to see it within the context of, of your environment. Having an opportunity to have wine, to meet you, and then to come up and look at the art, it's more of an enriching experience. So I worked on this series like three years. What is that? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Do you know the funny thing is you paint these now, and then so you have a two years later come back. Or you two kids. And it's, <laughs> it's a different meaning. It's a different meaning, yeah. But that's what's so wonderful. I love this one in the back and the body. John, I mean, he, he's a unique guy. When you look at his writings or his paintings, uh, his life, the home he chooses to live in, a farmhouse in Midtown, it really tells you a lot about not just who he is, but who he was and who he wants to be. It was a small farmhouse, and then it, they expanded it and made it a, a club, a very trendy club called Le Club. Famous people came. Frank Sinatra used to sing. Jackie uh, Onassis used to have her birthday parties. Warhol and Gore Vidal, we have pictures of and, and then he paints upstairs. Every artist wants to paint in light, and I have 17 skylights here. So this is the perfect place for me. When I paint, I am captivated by the idea, and the idea permeates my whole body, especially my arms. I think inspiration, after all, as the word suggests, it's the spirit. Usually it's a woman, a muse, and she sits on your left shoulder and she guides you. Sometimes inspiration is nothing more than knowing exactly what to do. It's not feeling taken over. It's actually a feeling of detachment. Are you going into your dark period? My dark period. <laughs> yeah. Off goes my ear. Yeah. I have downstairs this vault like where I have all my paintings that I haven't sold and I bring them out and I look at them. These are a lot of paintings from Egypt. The color is very different from how I work now. I used to live in Egypt. I used to paint there outside and that was thrilling. So I think I paint according to the location. All right, John, I'm getting ready to take off for the day. Is there anything else you need me to do? I am John's personal assistant as well as studio manager. So I handle all of the social media. See, this is something new for me, Instagram. We're working on it, but it's gonna be how do your people, new platform. How do people know about that you have a picture floating somewhere? Hashtags, it's the best way to get your, your pictures out there, I guess I would say. Whoever comes into this team is a family, and that's the first thing that I always want to be as a family. Rebecca James is my producer. She's a good friend. 
got limited money. We just finished our film, Dick and Jack. This is my first film. Jack, you know I wanted to be President Jack. It's a story of Richard Nixon and Jack Kennedy and their relationship to their fathers. It's a comedy. <laughs> Mrs. Mao is a film project that we're working on now. The new film is definitely gonna be a lot bigger than the last, the first one that we worked on together. We are just at the beginning of casting. This is uh, a film about Chang Qing. Her mother was a hooker. She became a hooker and she evolved to rule 500 million Chinese. Probably gonna be more of an artistic film, a more poetic film. It's not gonna be a blockbuster. I'm not interested in that. I would describe John with a visionary. He has a fantastic world inside of his mind. My new name. Yes, I'm Green River. There's a lot that he has to say, a lot that he brings to the table. He has a very, very interesting take on life. I mean, I have to say, of all of the artists that I work with, I, I have an especially close relationship with John. Where he is in his career, I mean, he's, he's in the height of it. And, and my job is to make sure that in this life, he sees the recognition for all the hard work that he's done.